My color set's really funky today. I won't be able to fix my color today. I'm just gonna keep it. Men's kimono and women's kimono are different, as well as kimono coats, as well as hakama, and of course, obi are different too. Men do wear a so-called kaku obi. This is a kaku obi. They're actually quite long. I haven't measured this one, but when you are very slim, they fit around you thrice. <laughs> and you still can tie your knot nicely on the front. And their width is about 10 to 9.5 to 10 centimeter. That's the width of them. And men do have another obi that is called hiko obi. Men's hiko obi usually have a lot of tie dye all over. There are also hiko obi with just a little bit of tie dye, shibori zome. And it's basically just a very long cloth that is used as an obi. They do also exist for women. Hiko obi are also wearable for women too. And nowadays you find a lot of cute different designs for women. Let's say a few decades earlier, hiko obi were only for men and children. That changed. On the other side, women do have a variety of obi. There are Fukuro obi, Nagoya obi, Maru obi, Hoso obi, Hanhawa obi. This is a Hanhawa obi. The length and width differ today completely, but historically, or let's say a few decades ago, all of them were about 3 meter 60, I think, and width was definitely 15 centimeter. That was 15 centimeter is the half width of a full width Kuro Obi, which is usually 30 to 31 centimeter wide, and that is why this is called Han Haba Obi, half width Obi. Of course, with those different types of obi, we do have also different obi arrangements, different obi knots in Japanese obi musubi for men and women. But, and here's the thing, there are also genderless obi musubi that can be worn by anyone, men, women, and any other gender. So let's take a look at those. Yo! In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. That was a very long intro. <laughs> I already do apologize for it. Anyway, when you want to learn more about Obi, I do have a video that is called All About Obi and I link that down below and in the top right corner. Today, kimono Obi Musubi are actually quite gendered. For example, the very famous otaiko that is mostly worn by women today can be worn with any man's obi and it also look, would look weird. And you can't wear it with a man's kimono because a kimono sleeve is so down until here and a woman's sleeve is actually open here so I can wear my obi higher. But that wasn't always like this. In Murumachi period, kimono were actually all men's shape, like today's men's kimono, was like a kosode, that is the historical accurate word for kimono in history, that is what kosode looked like. And everybody wore them. Even furisode, the kimono with the very long sleeves that are today for unmarried women, those were worn by boys and girls in history. So there was actually no gender forced onto kimono, most of the people look quite the same when we talk about kimono shape. And that was also for obi. The most famous obi in history we do know is the so-called Nagoya obi. And attention, it is a different Nagoya obi than the one we know today. That Nagoya obi was actually just a braided long rope that was used as an obi. And it was produced in a city called Nagoya on Kyushu, on the island Kyushu where I live. And that is why this one is also called Nagoya obi. And that one was in trend until the mid Edo period. Before entering the Edo period, also obi became a little bit wider and they really looked like a kaku obi today. They became from seven to eight to nine centimeter wide, which is basically a kaku obi today. And those were also worn equally by men and women. 
One of the most popular obi musubi that was worn by men and women at that time was the so-called karuta musubi. And I want to show you how to tie that. For a kako obi, these paper clips work very well. You start with finding a good length for the te. In my experience, five to six times of the obi width should work well. You fold down one corner of the obi. And how many times you wrap then the obi around this will be how many times you will have the width of the obi as length. This length is your te, and you mark this out with the clip. Pass the te from right to left on your back. Fold the te down into a 90 degree angle and clip it onto the tie around your waist. Start to wrap the obi around your waist. Keep in mind that a kako obi is placed lower on the front than on the back. And also try to have all the layers nicely aligned. Take the clip off and pull both sides to tighten. Bring the tare to your left and clip all the layers of the obi together in the center. Fold then the tare back, which will be showing the back of the obi. Fold this back again. Make sure to have this width approximately as wide as the obi is. Clip this in place. Measure then the width of the obi on the other side as well and fold the rest of the obi length inside. Start to wrap the obi around all those layers of obi in the center and pull it through. Repeat this. You could leave this little piece of tear on the bottom when you like it. But I personally like my karuta musubi with this part being hidden under the obi. So I fold this back up and tuck it behind the obi. Don't forget to turn your obi to the back and done. When you want to tie this with a women's kimono, you will have to use a hanhaba obi. And it's basically the same, just because the width is different, you have to take a longer tear. So let me quickly show you how to do that. For hanhaba obi, the length of the tear is the following. You fold the obi down and you want the end of the obi to cover your knees. Clip the obi onto the center of your obi ita and start to wrap the obi around your waist. Keep in mind that obi for women's kimono have the same height on back and front. Take the clip off and tighten the obi by pulling only the right side. Bring the tade, the right side, to your left. Clip the clip onto the center and fold the tade back. With hanhaba obi, I personally find it more balanced when the sides are a little smaller than the obi width. So there's a little difference than tying it with a kako obi. Then, same as before, I fold the rest of the tare in. Wrap the tear around all the obi layers twice. And try to keep your obi out of this. You could again leave this piece of tear on the bottom, but I again fold this up and hide it under the obi. Turn the obi and done! From the mid 18th century, women's obi became wider and also longer. And that is because the kimono became longer too. 
Before that, kimono were worn tsuitake. Tsuitake means the kimono has the length you need to just put it on and tie a tie around it to hold it tight or closed. And that is what you do with a men's kimono today. But women's kimono during Edo period became so long, thus the hem was wiped over the floor when walking. You might think of a Michael or Geisha style when you think of that. And such a long kimono would really look weird with this super, super tiny obi on the front. And that is why the hairstyle and the obi became super wide, just to have a balanced look in total. And that is why a lot of obi musubi were evolved to deal with those really long and wide obi and make it more fitting or balanced to this very long kimono. So that was a time when suddenly men's obi musubi and women's obi musubi appeared. One of the men's obi musubi that was really famous at times is the so-called kainokuchi. And I want to show you how to tie that. For this obi musubi, I recommend for kaku obi the width of your hip plus a hand size. This is your te. Fold the width of this length in half and fix it against your body by wrapping the obi around your waist, so no clip needed. Wrap this one or even two times more around your waist, depending on how much obi length you still have left. Tighten the obi by pulling both ends. Pull out the te all the way to your left. Bring both ends together on the front and make the long end, the tare, three centimeters shorter than the te by folding it back in. Align this length neatly with the obi around your waist so the end won't peek out. Pull both ends again to tighten. Put the te in front of you. Lay the tare on top of this and pull the tare through. Hold the te in place and tighten the tare by pulling on it. First the right edge and then the left edge. Try to keep this knot as flat as you can. Then you fold the te diagonally upwards. Wrap the tare around it and pull it through to the other side to tie another knot. After tightening those two sides and turning it, you're done. The length of the te for a hanhaba obi is from your left shoulder to your right hip bone. At least this length always works for me. Clip this length on your obi eta and start to wrap the obi twice around your waist. Take the clip off to tighten the obi by pulling both ends. Make the tada 3 cm shorter than the te by folding it back. Tuck this length neatly under the obi around your waist. After tightening again, you lay tare on te and pull the tare through. Hold the te in place and pull the tare first on the right side and then on the left side. Fold then the te diagonally up. Wrap the tare around it and pull it to the other side. I find kainokuchi harder to make it look neatly with a hanhaba obi, so take your time to straighten this out. And you might wonder now why do men still have those narrow obi and why does the kimono silhouette basically still looks like a kosode? And that is because 
In Edo period, men were really tied down with what to wear because there were a lot of social rules, what you have to wear to work, and it all depended on your standing in society. And that is why the kimono silhouette never really changed. But of course, there were even more obimusubi to have fun with. One of them I want to show you is katabasami. You will also find the name Ronin Musubi for Katabasami. I personally like the name Katabasami more because that is how I was taught how it's called. That is how it was known in history. And I also know a lot of people who still call it like this. And of course, women also started to wear this. So here is how to dye this with a Hanhaba Obi. How to tie this <laughs> with a Hanhaba Obi. Measure three times of the oval width for the te. Mark this length out with a clip and fold it in half. Clip this on your obi itta and wrap the obi around your waist twice. Take off the clip and pull both ends to tighten. Make the tadi again 3 cm shorter than the tape by folding it back and tucking it under the obi around your waist. Retighten again by pulling both ends. Put tadi on te and pull the tadi through. Tighten this by holding the te in place and pull the tadi first on the right edge and then on the left edge. Then you fold the tadi diagonally down to your left and put this behind the obi around your waist. Pull it through. When your tear is too long, like mine here, feel free to fold it up and tuck it into the obi. You, by the way, should and can do this little fix with all the obi musubi I'm showing you in this video. Don't forget to turn the obi to the back and finished. The tail length for kako obi is your hip width plus one fist. Aren't those measurements just gorgeous? <laughs> Fold this in half and fix this again onto the center of your waist by wrapping the tade over it. So no clip needed again. Adjust the length of the tade by folding it back. Again, 3 cm shorter than the te should be fine. Tie the knot by pulling the tade through. Pull the tade right and then left to tighten. Put the tare through the OB around your waist. Turn it and you're finished. Up next is the so-called Ronin Musubi, or better said, I learned it as Noshime Katabasami. And this was also only arrangement for men in history. And today it's also worn by women. So let me show you how to tie that. Length of the te is one and a half of your hip width. Fold the te in half and wrap the obi around your waist. Adjust again the length of the tade by folding it back. But this time, I have the tade 2 to 3 cm longer than the te. Fold the te diagonally upwards to your left. Put the tade over it, and then you put this behind the obi around your waist. Pull the tadi through.
turn the OB and done. For a Hanhaba Obi, I recommend again the length from your left shoulder to your right hip bone. And continue as I showed you with the Kaku Obi before. By the way, all te measurements I give you here in this video are basically just to experiment. I've done a live workshop on my Patreon and everyone worked with different te lengths and it still worked out. But when I tried a different length, it never worked out. So regard these te measurements as my measurements and feel free to look for yours. Fold the te up. Put the tade over it and pull it through the obi around your waist. Don't forget to turn the obi and straighten out. What I find very interesting about all those obi musubi is that besides karta musubi, all the other obi musubi I showed you were originally only for men. And today, women do wear them. Especially kainokuchi is uh, so popular among women with hanhabo obi as well. And there is not even like a look more manly kind of feeling to it when you actually tie it. Those obi musubi are completely genderless and you can just wear it without looking more manly or more female. Those are just obi musubi that can be worn by both genders. Or more genders. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. I do have a giveaway for you guys that I have promised and I'm gonna draw the winner right now. Ooh, I'm not quite sure if I can read that name, but it's Joseph. I am going to write you a comment with my email and please reach out to me. You have to tell me your address so I can send my men's kimono that I made by myself to you. You will get it freshly pressed and nicely done. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you will have a lot of fun with it. Keep in mind it is made by me, so it's not perfect. It's not perfect tailoring. The color might sit a little weird. I'm already apologizing for it, but I think you will still have fun with it. Thank you for joining with me on this little genderless obi musubi journey. I did have a lot of fun. I will not wear a men's kimono again. <laughs> I really did not like it on me, but it was definitely fun and I learned something. I personally find women's kimono more comfortable than men's kimono. It's probably just because I'm more used to them. When you're here for the first time and you want to learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher, make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it and leave me a comment down below and share it because that will help me out a lot. And I talk to you in my next video. Bye!